Hello, good day everyone, and welcome to a week 2 lesson 2, and this is for dates May 24 to 29, 2021. So the title of our lesson, Strategies for an Effective Conversation. Now, I hope by this time nakatapos na kayo ng ating lesson 1, and that is again, Features of Academic Writing. Okay guys, speaking of this uh, video guides, reminder lang ano, Itong aking mga lesson, uh, itong aking mga video guides ay good for one week. So, pinipilit ko siyang pinagkakasya within 30 minutes para madali lang panoodin. But I do really hope na uh, kung hindi nyo siya maintindihan sa first listening or sabihin na natin sa first viewing ninyo, gagawa nyo na paraan na ulit-ulitin siya part by part habang ginagawa nyo yung task by task para makasunod kayo. Kasi alam nyo guys, kahit ako mismo, ano, teacher na ako, ako yung gumagawa nito, I really take time na ma-review ito ng hindi iisang beses, hindi dadalawang beses. So sana kung ano man yung effort na ginagawa ko, ganun din kayo. Mag-effort kayo para tulungan ang inyong mga sarili. Kasi syempre, these lessons are new to you. The topics are new to you. So, don't expect na ganun ka katalino or ganun ka kahusay, tapos sisisihin mo yung sarili mo pag hindi mo siya maintindihan. Take time to watch, take time to listen carefully, and do the task pace by pace. Ibig sabihin, utay-utay. Okay? So, kung maliwanag na yan, let's go to slide number 2. So again, ano ang ating most essential learning competency? Employ a variety of strategies for effective interpersonal communication, interview, dialogue, and conversation. So guys, uh, I believe noong third quarter, meron na tayong interview, interview plan. So ngayon, magpo-focus tayo naman sa conversation and dialogues. Our enabling competencies, meaning ano daw yung mga dapat mong matutunan uh, to, at, uh, to achieve our milk. So, number one, observe and use the appropriate oral language stance and behavior when giving information, instructions, making explanations, and narrating events in factual and personal recount. So, tingnan nyo to ha. Yung aking mga estudyante na nanonood talaga ng aking videos, I believe ito ay familiar na because ito rin yung skill doon sa third quarter lesson one. And then let's have number two, give clear, precise, and concise information, explanations, and instructions in varied oral communication situations. So guys, kung tayo ay face-to-face, -face, again, this will be in a form of face-to-face -face conversation. Marami kaming mga role-playing, mga sa English, panel discussion, kung mga kung nakakunwari ang interview, and since tayo ngayon ay virtual, so lahat ay magiging paper and pen. Okay, huwag na tayong magugulat doon. And then number three, orally narrate events in factual and personal recounts using appropriate verbal and non-verbal cues. Okay, tingnan nyo guys ha, hinighlight ko yung verbal and non-verbal cues. In my previous videos, na-mention uh, na ko na ito. And when we are talking of communication or in Tagalog, pakikipag-usap, Hindi kung ano lang yung sinasabi ay, sabihin natin, hindi kung ano lang yung mga words na sinasabi, meaning yun lang ang communications. Maraming paraan ng pakikipag-usap. Kasama din ang non-verbal cues. And later on, malalaman nyo ano ba itong mga non-verbal cues na sinasabi ni ma'am. Okay? Let's move on. Conversation strategies. So, kapag pala nakikipag-usap, kailangan din natin ng, ng strategy or ng mga estratehiya. Okay? I want you to read with me. As a form of communication, conversation is where you exchange thoughts, opinions, and information on things with your family, friends, neighbors, or even to an acquaintance. This can lead to good, peaceful, and harmonious relationship among individuals. Okay? Talagalugin natin. So, sa paraan daw ng pakikipag-usap, itong conversation, ito yung ginagawa nating pakikipag-talakayan, kagaya ng aking clip art na inilagay dito. Ano? Ito daw yung paraan kung paano ka nakikipagpalitan ng idea, ng opinion, at ng mga information. Kahit nga minsan chismis, ano, pinagpapalitan natin. 
kanino daw sa ating pamilya, sa ating mga kaibigan, kapitbahay, or kahit sa mga kakilala mo lang. At kapag ka ang conversation ay maganda, this can lead daw to good, peaceful, and harmonious relationship. Nakakaroon ng magandang pagsasama dahil sa maayos na pakikipag-usap. Okay, let us have number two. Properly expressing your thoughts and opinions, whether it is verbal or non-verbal, requires the art of speaking. Okay, I remember when I was young, laging sabi ng aking mamay, ako daw ay managalog ng tama, which I really don't understand by that time. So, ang ibig sabihin pala niya, kailangan alam ko kung ano yung tamang salita doon sa gusto kong ipakahulugan. Yun ang sinasabing managalog ng ayos, especially kayong mga millennials. Sometimes, your intentions are good, your ideas are good, pero yung paraan ng pagkakasabi ay hindi maganda. Yun ang sinasabi sa atin ng number two. Number three, there are times that conversation can be challenging. If that happens, you need ways on how to keep a conversation going and solve possible communication issues. So, minsan daw, mahirap ang makipag-usap. Bakit kaya? Parehas naman kayong nagsasalita ng Tagalog or parehas naman kayong nag-i-English pero hindi kayo nagkakaintindihan. Kaya pag daw dumating sa ganong sitwasyon, kailangan daw makaisip ka ng paraan kung paano mo malulutas ang mga problema. Tingnan natin. Active strategies to be used in conversation. So we have A, C, T, I, V, E strategies. And A stands for asking open-ended question. O ha, pamilyar tayo dyan. Ito po ay nabanggit sa ating lesson. I believe this is in lesson 1 or lesson 2. Maalin doon. So marami sa inyo doon na nagkamali. Kasi siguro hindi pinanood ang video ni ma'am. Bakit? Kasi binigyan ko doon ng emphasis na ang open-ended questions ay nagsisimula sa WH. Kapag yes or no ang tanong, hindi siya open-ended. Ang nagamamang ibig sabihin ng open-ended? Open, bukas, ended, katapusan. So, ibig sabihin, hindi mo alam kung paano tatapusin ang kausap mo ang, ang sagot sa tanong. Okay? Unlike kung tinanong mo siya, let's say, yung mga yes or no questions natin. Bawa, let's say, do you like spaghetti? Ang sagot niya, no. Hindi siya open-ended kasi alam mo na na pagpipilian niya ay yes and no lang. Unlike kung tinanong mo siya, why do you like spaghetti? So, there are so many options. Marami siyang posibleng isagot sa iyo. Kaya ang tawag ay open-ended questions. So, again guys, ang open-ended questions ay nagsisimula sa WH. Kasama ba ma'am doon ang how? Yes, kasama ang how. And letter C stands for clarifying for comprehension. Basahin natin ito kasi ito medyo unfamiliar sa atin. This will ensure that you understand what you heard and that you get the details you need. Di ba pagka tayo nakikipag-usap, may sinabi siya, tapos hindi mo masyadong na-gets. Sinasabi mo sa kanya, ano nga yun? Ano nga uli sinabi mo? Okay, pag nagtanong ka daw ng ganun, ang tawag doon, you are clarifying for comprehension. Tingnan niyo yung example niya, when you said, o oh, yun na sabi ko sa'yo, ano yung sinabi mo? Let's say, ano yung sinabi mo tungkol sa Vulcan Taal? Okay? When you said about Taal Volcano, what do you mean? O, oh, yun ang ibig sabihin ng clarifying for comprehension. Meron kang gustong linawin. And then letter T, trying conversation starters. A good conversation starter can turn an ordinary conversation into something extraordinary. Okay, lalo na mga lalaki, marun magagaling kayo dito. Papaano ka daw ba mag-uumpisa ng pulong? Okay, gusto mong ligawan, papaano mo uumpisahan? Ano yung mga strategies na ginagamit natin? So, tingnan nyo yung example. Do you know blank? O, kunwari, eh, patutsyada ka. O, do you know, let's say, uh, do you know where can I buy ball pen? Kahit obvious na ang sagot. Itatanong mo parang magkaroon lamang ng mapag-uumpisahan. Next, letter I, interrupting politely. With the proper timing, use a polite introduction to your interruption. 
Halimbawa, gusto mong sumabat. Mali ang sinasabi ng kausap mo. Paano mo daw siya puputulin nang hindi naman nakakabastos? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng interrupting politely. Look at the example. Excuse me, can I ask something? O, oh, pwede na naman. Excuse me, can I add something? Hindi ask, kundi add. Para may gusto kang idagdag. Ano, pwede rin yun. Ang mahalaga dyan ay may salitang excuse me. Okay? Voicing opinions. That stands for letter V. It is important to know how to express yourself so that you will not be misunderstood. Okay, tingnan nyo guys, napakahalaga nito. Dapat daw alam mo kung papaano mo i-express ang sarili mo para hindi ka uh, nami-misunderstood. O, ito ang mga example niya. In my experience, blah, blah, blah. I agree, blah, blah, blah. So, ibig sabihin ng blah, 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 and so on and so forth. O, okay, kung may sasabihin ka pa. So, may yung mga examples naman na yan, ibibigay ko uli later on. And then, letter E, expressing with keepers. This may be used to continue or keep a conversation going. Okay, lalo na kapag ang kausap mo ay gustong gusto mo, ayaw mong maputol, ang inyong pinagpupulungan, gagawa at gagawa ka ng paraan para makapagtanong uli. Kaya, tinan yung example niya, how about you? O, oh, may follow-up question, di ba? Uh, limbawa, nagkakwento siya tungkol sa favorite food niya. Oh, eh, nauubusan ka na ng sasabihin. So, ang sasabihin mo, how about you? Oh, para siya naman yung iimik. So, again, ito yung tinatawag nating active strategies to be used in a conversation. Balikan na lang natin yan later siguro. Okay, ito na yung sinasabi kaninang non-verbal cues. Ano ba daw yan? Read with me. To communicate, we do not always have to talk. Without realizing, people send or receive non-verbal cues in every conversation. It is another form of communication where people make facial expressions, eye contact, and hand and body gestures. Being aware of these non-verbal cues is important because they will give additional information and meaning in any interaction. Here are some of the non-verbal cues which can enhance communication if used properly. Okay, alam nyo guys, itong non-verbal cue, ito yung actually yung technique ng parents mo. Bakit kahit wala ka namang sinasabi, ay naiintindihan ka nila. Kasi syempre sila nagpalaki sa iyo eh. Yung iyong facial expression, hindi ka nga umimik, simangot ka naman. So, ibig sabihin agad nun, ah, batang ito ayaw sumunod. Okay, wala ka ngang sinabi, pero yung eye contact mo, sabi nga, if looks could kill, patay ang iyong kaharap sa pagkakatitig mo. ba diba? Hand and body gesture, sabi mo, hindi po ako nagdadabog. Pero yung tunog ng paa mo sa sahig ay lagapak na. Okay, yan yung mga tinatawag na hand and body gestures. Meron ka pang pakumpas-kumpas para pagbigyan ng, let's say, bigyan ng emphasis ang sinasabi mo. May pa, kapag naman nagpapakyut ka, meron ka pang pasway-sway ng buhok. Yan yung mga tinatawag nating non-verbal cues. Dapat daw aware ka dyan. Dahil yan daw ay mahalaga sa communications because it also conveys a lot of meaning ano aside from this nonverbal cues ano ito guys hindi niyo ako nakikita diba pero naririnig niyo yung boses ko yung rising and falling intonation that i am using it is also part of this nonverbal cues kasi base sa pagbaba at pagtaas ng boses ko na nararalam kong na visualize niyo kung paano ko siya sinasabi or kung ano din yung gusto kong ipakahulugan. ba diba kapag ka nagbibigay ako ng emphasis, lumalakas ang boses ko. Pag hindi naman masyadong mahalaga, edi humihina ang boses ko. And then sometimes bumibilis, bumabagal. So this is, these are also part of non-verbal cues. Okay, eto na po yun. Again, facial expression. Your brows, ano ba yung brows? Kilay, mouth, eyes, and facial muscles can be effective in communicate, 
communicating emotion and information. Kaya pag ang tao in love, alam na alam mo. Namumula-mula yan. Okay? Eye contact. Using eye contact shows that you're attentive and interested in what the person is saying. Ito guys, very evident to, lalo na sa klase. Alam na alam ko kung sino ang nakikinig at hindi. And then, itong gestures. O, oh, katigdan nyo yun ha. May, bakit may arrow sa may ulo? Ibig sabihin, yung pagtango, pag-ibo ng ulo mo, kasama daw yan sa body gestures and hand gestures. Look at this, body movements, especially hands and head express emotions and messages. So, here, meron naman tayo sa babang mga examples. Kayo na lang ang magbasa niyan. Ano? Take time to read, ha? Okay. Giving and taking down messages. So, isiningit ng ating author, ano naman ang gagawin mo kapag ikaw naman ay nagbibigay daw at kumukuha ng mga messages. So, in situations like calls or telephone conversations, these nonverbal cues will not be present. Of course, make sure that you communicate or receive the message accurately. Follow the guidelines on giving and taking down messages. So, guys, ito hindi lang sa telepono actually. Halimbawa, wala ang nanay mo. May naghahanap na kumare. Okay? May ibibilin. So, do not trust your memory. Kumuha ka ng ball, pen at papel at itanong mo kung anong pangalan niya and then kung ano yung message niya. Hindi yung basta ka lang nakinig, umalis yung kumare ng nanay mo and then nakalimutan mo kaya mamaya mamumura ka. So, yan yung mga, mga sinasabi nating misunderstanding and mga mishaps in communication. So, balik tayo dito sa slide. So, number one, when giving a message, be brief, state all the information. Dapat daw maiksi lang, short. Okay? Remember to thank the person you are talking to. Huwag kakalimutang maging courteous. Means polite, magalang. When taking down a message, listen carefully. Write down the details accurately. Thank the person on the other line and convey the message accurately to the person concerned orally or by writing a note. So, itong pinakamahalaga dito, guys. Itong salitang convey yan, the message accurately. So, mahalaga na kung ano yung sinabi, yun din yung isasabihin mo pabalik. Hindi yung halimbawa, kaya sabi nga ang chismis daw ay maling mali dahil pag sinabi, alam mo doon ay ano, uh, may nakita bulate. Pagating doon sa kabilang bayan, ang nakita ahas na. Kasi hindi na convey ng ayos ang information. Hindi kasi isinulat. Okay, ginawa eh. Nag-hear, hearsay ang tawag doon. Ano, pinakinggan and then sinabi. Kaya mga chismis. Ang tawag sa chismis, mga hearsay. Read a dialogue between Mara and Ronel. Focus on the conversation strategies and nonverbal cues. Note, nonverbal cues are those written inside the parentheses. So, si Mara, ito na yung meron tayong picture dito. Sabi niya, hi, my name is Mara. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sabi naman ni Ronel. Hi, Mara. I'm Ronel. It's a pleasure to meet you too. So, let us read their dialogues. Okay, nabasa ko na yun. So, look at this. Merong non-verbal cue si Ronel. Okay, si Ronel ay nakasmile. At dahil nakasmile si Ronel, si Mara naman nakastare at Ronel. Ibig sabihin nakatitig. Sabi ni Mara, where are you from? I am from Luis Palad Integrated High School. How about you? I am also from Luis Palad Integrated High School. Oh, what a small world. We meet here. It's true. Head nod. Anyway, do you know Apolinario de la Cruz? You're asking about Apolinario de la Cruz, known as Hermano Pule? Is that correct? Yes. I know him, but only few things about him. Can you help me answer some questions about him? Sure. Is Apolinario de la Cruz a native of Blocban, Quezon or not? He is a native of Blocban, Quezon. 
What are his contributions to the people of Quezon or even to all Filipinos? He is known to many as Germano Pule, the founder of Cofradia de San Jose, or Brotherhood of St. Joseph. For his fellow Filipinos, he led this movement for equality and religious freedom during the Spanish colonial period as a way of retaliation against the church for discriminating native Filipinos. The Cofradia banned Spaniards and mestizos from joining without police permission. Nodding his head, he is a great person. I agree. He is really a great man. It is, ju it is just proper for us Kizonian to give him honor every port day of November as her Manipule day. That's right. Thank you so much. You really are a big help. You are welcome. I'm happy to help. Can you excuse me for a while? Oh, sure. Go ahead. See, the conversation is very simple between Mara and Ronel, and I think maliwanag sa atin kung sino ang ating pinag-uusapan. Are they dating? Hindi, hindi sila nagde-date. Ano? Sila marahil ay gumagawa ng assignment. Kaya ang pinag-uusapan ay si Hermano Pule na nag-found down ng Cofradia de San Jose. So, siguro kung mga taga Quezon ay may Hermano Pule, sino naman ang bayani na taga Batangas? Sino? Si Malvar. Kaya po yan ay nasa ating street. Ano? Huwag natin kakalimutan yan. Makalimutan, nakalimutan na si uh, Miguel Malvar. Matangge nyo yan. Okay, punta tayo sa learning task 1. Mara and Ronel use nonverbal cues in their conversation. So again, ano yun? Those are written inside the parenthesis. Find the text evidence in the dialogue to show what specific cues they used. Copy the table and write your answer in the appropriate column. An example is provided as your guide. So guys, ang direction na ako, kopyahin muna ito. Pag nakopya, saka nyo sasagutan. So, meron na tayong example number 1 kay Mara staring at Ronel. Siya daw ay nakatitig kay Ronel. Si Ronel ba ay may pinakitang eye contact? Wala. Kasi hindi nilagay ni author doon na si Ronel ay nakastare back. Okay? Hindi. Pag sinabing eye contact, mata lang. Okay? Facial expression. So, kayo na mag-iisip. Ano? Hindi pala mag-iisip. Actually, kayo ang hahanap. From the dialogue, ano yung pinakitang facial expression ni Mara kay Ronel? Ano namang gestures, pwedeng body, pwedeng hand, uh, hand gestures na ipinakita ni Mara? And number three, same with Ronel. And, yan. So guys, kung wala, kung siguradong sigurado kang wala, so ang isasagot mo ay none. Learning test 2. Copy the table below and identify the conversation strategies used in the dialogue by writing the statements or questions in the second column. An example is provided as your guide. So guys, babalikan nyo uli yung dialogue ni Mara and Ronel. Kung kanina ang hinanap nyo ay non-verbal cues, ngayon naman ang hahanapin nyo ay mga verbal cues. Okay? Uh, let me correct myself. Ang Intonation, rising, falling intonation, pati pagbibigay ng stress ay part of tinatawag natin verbal cues. Kasama yun sa verbal cues. Hindi siya kasama sa non-verbal cues. Okay. So, dito naman, sa so task 2, verbal cues ang hahanapin natin. So, ang hahanapin mo daw, nakalagay dito, okay, ito, it can be a statement and it can be a question. So, may nag-pop up na tayo dito sa tabi. Nilagay ko yung example. Tandaan nyo kanina na binasa na ko yung active strategies. May mga examples doon. Inilagay ko dito. Hindi mo ito kukopyahin ha. Hahanapin mo yung kahawig niyan doon sa dialogue ni Mara and Ronel. So, again, pag nagka-clarify ka ng clarifying for comprehension, tinan nyo yung example niya, what did you mean? Sa Tagalog, anong ibig mong sabihin? Meron bang kahawig niya na sinabi si Mara at si Ronel dun sa dialogue nila? And then, number three, trying conversation starters. Do you know blank? O, oh, sino ba pinag-uusapan? I think, nabas, na, nabanggit yung line na yan dun kanina. 
So, kukopyahin nyo dito yan sa portion ng dialogue column. Yan. Again, we have interrupting politely, voicing opinions, expressing with keepers. Don't worry, meron akong ibinigay ng mga examples para hindi pa balik-balik ng slides. So, ito ha, ang ating clue ay, excuse me, can I ask something? So, kung meron, kukopyahin. Ma, paano kung wala? O, oh, ang sagot mo ay none. N-O-N-E. Kung sure na sure ka na wala, okay? Voicing opinions in my experience. And number six, how about you? Okay, I think meron niyang mga sagot na yan doon. Again ha, sa mga dito nag-open sa tapat na ito, ito po ay hindi hinuhulaan, ito po ay babalikan nyo ang dialogue at kokopyahin nyo yung tanong lang or statements na sumusuporta dito sa mga conversation strategies na ito. Okay, learning task 3 na tayo. O, ang bilis. The following sentences are taken from a telephone conversation between Marcus and Joy. Fill in the missing dialogue in their conversation. Choose from the lines below. So, meron lamang apat na nawawala dun sa dialogues nila. Ito ang mga pagpipilian. Mama, no, kukopyahin ba ito? Siyempre, kukopyahin mo. Hindi mo kailangan kopyahin yung dialogue kahit number 1, number 2, 3, and 4. Kasi apat lang naman talaga. Let us see. Ayon. The first dialogue ay spill ni Marcus. Spill means sasabihin ni Marcus. So, if you are Marcus, alin dito sa apat ang sasabihin mo dahil ang sagot sa iyo ni Joy ay Good afternoon, this is Joy Santos. Uh, ano to? He's a student. May I speak with Mr. Alfonso? Hindi ko guys mabasa. Kayo na magbasa. Okay, ayan, nagpakilala si Marcus. Nung magpakilala si Marcus, merong number 2. Alin naman dito sa apat na nasa kanan ang isasagot ni Joy? Okay, same choices lang yan. Huwag malilito. Yan. We have here number 3 and then number 4. So, alam ko tatanong nyo, Mami, do drawing ba? No need na i-drawing. Ilagay lang man po. Learning test 3, number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4. At gets na namin yon. Okay? Now, complete the message with Marcus wrote down for his brother. Kasi, ang hinahanap, hindi si Marcus, si Mr. Alfonso. So, Kung ikaw si Marcos, paano mo daw yung sasabihin sa iyong kapatid? Okay? When you were out blank cold, she said that blank. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, na examples ko sa inyo. What if may kumarin ng nanay mo na dumating? Anong gagawin mo? Diba sabi ko mag-take down ng notes? Okay. Name of the person who called. Sino yon? What did she say? So, ito ay, guys, number, excuse me, number 5. Learning test 4. Ito na yung ating performance test. Okay? Apply what you learned on conversation strategies and nonverbal cues by creating a dialogue with at least 10 lines. You can go back to the conversation of Mara and Ronel and use it as your guide. So, gagawa ka daw ngayon ng dialogue. Kagaya ng kay Mara and Ronel, kagaya ng kay Marcos and kay Joy. Meron tayong suggested topics, eto yon. Kaya, suggested kung meron ka pang gustong iba, okay lang. Suggested roles, eto yon. Kung may gusto ka pang iba pang maging role, walang problema. Suggest a dialogue format. O, pwedeng ganito lang. Yan, simple. Let's say, grandmother, Romel, grandmother, Romel. Okay? Or, yung nasa right side natin, you have the bubble style. Pwede rin. You can make your output as colorful as you can. Okay? Show yourself. Okay? Ito po ang ating rubrics. Criteria, again, your character development. Dialogue, conversation strategies, and non-verbal cues. Tingnan nyo guys ito ha, kasama ang non-verbal cues. Ibig sabihin, 
maglalagay din kayo doon ng mga words inside the parenthesis. Kung siya ba'y ngumiti, kung siya ba'y nagnad ng head, kung siya ba ay uh, nag-stare, ibig sabihin tumitig, okay, ano pa, kung siya ba ay nag-handshake, yan yung mga non-verbal cues na pwede nyo ilagay. And then presentation, tinan nyo, hindi nawawala ang ating creativity and originality. Of course, hindi po ito pwedeng kopyahin sa internet, guys. Kayo ay magpatulong sa pag-i-English sa inyong mga kaibigan, uh, kasama sa bahay. And you don't, need to you don't need to think of a difficult topic. Yung simple topic lang, kahit tungkol sa pang-ulam ninyo sa bahay, okay na yun. Basta ang dapat mechanics, spelling, and grammar ay tama. Okay? Hindi ko, hindi na, hindi na mo kailangan pag-usapan ng COVID-19 or about politics. Just a very simple conversation. Basta tama ang English, tama ang spelling, and nakita ko yung mga non-verbal cues. Then, you will get the total of 20 points. Again, this is the most important part of our lesson. Ito po ang ating performance output. Assimilation, complete the lesson summary in the speech bubble by filling in the blanks with the keywords provided inside the box. So, ito yon kayo na ang magbasa. Pero ang maganda, ito po sa left ang mga choices na ilalagay nyo dyan sa apat na blanks na yan. Okay? Tingnan nyo, in blank, you can use, dapat ka daw gumamit ng blank to keep a blank para daw ma, mapanatili mo kung alin man yun ang pagsasolve ng communication issues. Tapos, another form of communication, yun daw ay paraan ng komunikasyon na pwedeng mag-provide din ng additional message and meaning. Okay, assessment. Read the following statements and group the, the statements into two columns. Conversation is or conversation is not. Ibig sabihin, positive and negative lang ito. Positive Features of conversation or sabi na nating not features of conversation. Copy the table and write your answers on your paper. Guys, ito ay nasa lip din. Ito yung mga choices. Okay? Ito yung isasagot mo dun sa table na nasa sunod. Taga atin lang basahin ng mabilis. Waiting for my turn to speak. So, ikaw ay nag-iintay ng iyong chance na makapagsalita. Asking open-ended questions. Nagtatanong ka daw ng mga WH. Interrupting the person who is talking o pag ba nagsasalita, sabat ka ng sabat. Judging people based on their opinions. Let's say, halimbawa, may sinasabi, hindi mo gusto, sabi mo, napakasama ng taong ito. Ganun ka daw ba? Minding my uh, gestures, eye contact, and facial expressions. Ibig sabihin, uh, familiar ka at alam mo kung ano yung kinukonvey mo na nonverbal cues. Listening carefully to what others say and responding to them. Okay, nakikinig ka daw ng mabuti. And then, focusing on the mannerism, speaking styles, clothing of the person speaking. Mama, ano yung mannerism? Marami kayo nito, uh, marami kayo nito, kids. Alam ko, alam niyo yung mga sudyante ko dati, pag nagbabasa, pag babae, ibon ng ibon, para nagsusway balance, lose harap. Pag naman lalaki, kamot ng kamot ng ulo. Yan yung mga mannerism. Okay. Being distracted by noises, mobile phones, or by what other people are doing. Or minsan naman, kapag nagbabasa dun sa unahan, pagka may pagka, kaklase halimbawang tumayo, biglang natigil, tapos natitig. Yung mga ganon, madali daw madistract. Okay. Ayan yung table, again, kukopyahin. Lahat ng isasagot dito, manggagaling dun sa choices na pinakita ko. Ito po ay nasa lip din. So, I'm going to give uh, the first one para hahanapin na lang natin itatlo. Conversation is waiting for my turn to speak. Conversation is not interrupting the person who is talking. So, kayo nang bahalang mag-fill in ng three other features. Okay, last na tayo. Ito na po ang ating personal assessments on learner's level of performance. I hope familiar na tayo dito ha. Hindi ko na ito masyadong explain kasi ito naman ay ginawa na natin sa ating week 1. 
So again, stars, kapag hindi ka nahirapan, check kapag ka nagawa mo pero naintindihan mo din naman. Question mark kapag hindi mo nagawa at kailangan mo pa ng other activities. So ito yung ating table. Learning test 1, 2, 3, 4, assimilation and assessment. And then you're going to, do, uh, to draw here your symbol. So again, ang uh, this module was prepared by Ma'am Thessalonica Abisamis from Luis Palad Integrated High School. And the PowerPoint was made by yours truly. So thank you so much. Salamat po sa pagkinig uli sa ating mga parents. Hindi po ako magsasawa mag-thank you sa inyo. And sa mga students ko, good luck, God bless. And looking forward to be with you again in our next week. That's all guys. Goodbye.